We're on problem 33, and it asks, which equation represents a line that is parallel to y is equal to minus 5 fourths x plus 2? So a line that's parallel will have the same slope. And we can just look at this. We can inspect this and say, OK, the slope of this line is the coefficient on the x term. So the slope on this line is right there. So the slope is equal to minus 5 fourths. And so we just look, have to look at the other choice and say which one has the same slope of minus 5 fourths. And choice A actually is, choice A is y is equal to minus 5 fourths x plus 1. So it has the exact same slope, and it's just shifted down by 1. So A is our choice. Now problem 34. Let me copy and paste this one. Okay. Let's see. I can paste it. All right. And they ask us which graph best represents the solution to the system of inequalities. Okay. So we could take each of these inequalities, and then what we want to do is want we want the area that satisfies both of these inequalities. So let's take a the, take a look at the first one. And I like to always have it in kind of y is equal to mx plus b form, so let's do that. So we have the first one says 2x is greater than or equal to y minus 1. If we add 1 to both sides, we get 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to y. And if we just want to write that in a way that we're used to seeing it, y, which I'm just switching it around, y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. So let's see which what which one this represents. We have a line 2x plus 1, so the y-intercept is 1, and the slope is 2. So let's see. So that's this line here. right? y-intercept 1, and if we go over to the right 2, we go up 4. right? However much we go to the, however much we increase in x, we increase twice as much with y, and that's what the slope tells us. right? And that's this line in this chart, like that. Fair enough. So that's that line. And they're saying y is less than that. So we want the area below that graph. right? So it's not this one. right? This one, they're shading in the area above that line. right? For any x and y that's on the line, they're shading in y is greater than that point. No, but we want y is less than that point. So for any, for any y on the point, all the y's less than it satisfy it. So based on the information now, this one seems to be a pretty good candidate. I haven't looked at the other line yet. And frankly, neither of, I guess, no, neither of, maybe this one might be a candidate, because this is also less than. Maybe we have to be less than both of these lines, right? This is the line that we just figured out. We're definitely less than it. Maybe we have to be less than that second line as well. So if we have to be greater than that second line, we haven't looked at that yet, it's going to be choice C. If we have to be less than the second line and this first line, then we're going to be in choice D. Let's see what the second piece of information tells us. OK, well, they actually have a typo. And they don't give us enough information to actually, let me see if I can, let me look up the answer. Because they don't even, they didn't even write a greater than or equal or nothing here. So I have to see what they probably intended. OK, so I'm, I just looked up the answer. And they said that the answer is C. So they must want us to be greater than this second line. Greater than the second line. So let's figure out what this should have been. So if we, you know, what what should have this should there have been an equal? Well, definitely not an equal sign, but should there have been a greater than or less than or whatever? We'll figure that out. So let's see, two x minus five y circle ten, right? We don't know if there's an equal there or less. This is almost a better exercise than than what they intended. Okay. So then if we Let's see, if we were to add 5y to both sides, I just want to get y on the other side. And I don't want to have to say flip signs and divide by minus 5. So let me get 5y on the other side. So I'll add 5y to both sides. So we get 2x, whatever inequality sign is, so that could be an equal or in whatever, 10 plus 5y. Could subtract 10 from both sides. So you get 2x minus 10, circle. 5y. Remember that circle could be an equal sign. Well, it's not equal. It's either greater than or equal, or it's a less than or equal. And then we can, and then we can divide both sides by five, and you get two divided by five. X minus two 
some greater than or equal or less than or equal sign, y. Now they told us c was the answer because I had to look it up because they didn't give us a, any inequality sign there. If c is the answer, that means we're going to we want all y's that are below this below the first line, so below this line right here. So that's that area. And if we're in this gray area, we're all y's that are above this this bottom line, right? So if we're above this bottom line, this bottom line is two fifths x minus two. So we want all y's that are greater than that. Greater than that. Oh no, no sorry, I've done it. I, I just we want all the y's that are greater than that. Y is greater than this thing. So that sign in this problem should have been should have been a less than sign, right? I'm saying y is greater than this, but if you read it left to right, you have 2x minus 2 is less than y. And so we figured out the sign. And you might be saying, "Hey, wait, how, how come this area over here doesn't work?" Right? Well, if you think about it, this area is above our first line. This area is y is greater than 2x plus 1. It's above our first line. And it's actually below our second line. So it's actually the opposite area. Anyway, next problem. So the answer was c. Next problem. 35. OK, let's see. I'll copy and paste this one, because I think the choices are interesting. What is the solution to this system of equations? All right, so let's see if we can get it in a in a form that makes it easy to look at. So if we, I'll just let's take that first equation and let's add three x to both sides. If you add three x to both sides, that first equation becomes positive three x plus y is equal to minus two. Right? All I did is I did plus three. Like you can't see that. I added plus three x to both sides of this equation. And of course, that cancels with that. All right. And now let's see, that second equation is 6x plus 2 is equal to minus 2. Well, I'm, you can already see, well, let me, let me do something else to this equation. And I think it'll become apparent that these are actually the same line. So if you take this first equation and multiply both sides of it by 2, what do you get? See, so multiply 3x plus y by 2, you get 2 times 3x is 6x plus 2 times y. You're right, you have to distribute the 2 plus 2y is equal to minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. And they're the same line. Same line. So if, when you're solving a system of equations, you're fi figuring out where do those two equations intersect. If they're the same lines, they intersect everywhere. So they have an infinite number of solutions. So the answer is choice D. Next problem. OK, they give us another one like that. They want to know the ordered pair that's a solution to this equation. I'll just copy and paste the equation there. OK, so the easiest thing to do is probably to just subtract the second equation from the first equation. And instead, of, I'll actually write it out explicitly. So the first equation is x plus 3y is equal to 7. Instead of subtracting this one from that one, let's just multiply the second equation by negative 1, and then we'll add the two equations. So if we multiply this bottom equation by negative 1, we get minus x minus 2y is equal to minus 10. And the whole reason why I'm doing that is I know when I add these two left-hand sides, the x and the minus x are going to cancel out, and then I can just solve for y. That's why you, know, you immediately see oh, they have an x and an x. If we subtract this from that, they'll cancel out. So let's. So if we add these two equations, the x's cancel out. 3y minus 2y is equal to y. And 7 minus 10, 7 minus 10 is equal to minus 3. Fair enough. And now we can substitute back in to figure out an x. So let's use the first equation. x plus 3 times minus 3, we figured out what y is is equal to 7. And then you get x, 3 times minus 9 is equal to 7. x is equal to, add 9 to both sides of this equation, x is equal to 16. So the solution is 16 comma minus 3, x and y. And that is choice D. All right. 
Problem 37. 37. Marcy has a total of 100 dimes and quarters. If the total value of the coins is 1405, how many quarters does she have? All right, so let's, let's say that D is the number of dimes and Q is the number of quarters. So if you take the number of dimes plus the number of quarters, she has 100 coins, right? That's this piece of information right there. And then the total value of the coins, well, it's going to be, it's going to be 0 0.10 times the number of dimes plus 0.25 times the number of quarters. And they tell us that that is equal to 14. 1405 and so and that's this piece of information the total value of the coins is 1405 and they say well, how many quarters does she have so we just have to solve for q so let's do that so if we want to cancel out the d's what we could do is we can multiply this top equation by let's say minus 0.1 right and i'm doing that so it cancels out with this this d right here and let me do it in a different color so if I multiply that top equation times minus 0.1, I get minus 0.1d, minus 0.1, we can write 1, 0 if I want, d, minus 0.10q is equal to, what's minus 1 tenth of 100? Well, it's minus 10, right? Minus 10. 100 times 0.1 is 10, and then we're doing a minus 0.1. All right, now we can add these two equations. 0.1d minus 0.1d, those cancel out. 0.25q minus 0.1q, that's equal to, let me switch colors, that's equal to 0.15q is equal to, and what's 1405 minus 10? Well, that's equal to $4.05. Just to get rid of the decimals, we can multiply both sides of this equation by 100, right? So we'll get 15q, 15q is equal to, 405. And then we just say Q. So Q, we divide both sides of this by 15. And so what is how many times does 15 go into 405? 15 goes into 40. What, 2 times? 2 times 15 is 30. Get a 10. 105. 15 goes into 105 seven times, I think. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10, right, 27. So Q is equal to 27. So Marcy has 27 quarters. Anyway, see.